my god, I've never seen hogs move this fast. Here. This is insane. Hold on. Look at all the hogs. Look at all the hogs. They're everywhere. This is the fastest hog attack I've ever seen. The long-awaited beginning of the Golden Heart Cup is finally here. We're into the group stages. The regional qualifiers have completed and two of the teams from each of the groups listed on your screen are going to be advancing to the playoffs. But until then, they need to go in the top half of their group. There are four teams per group. And that means two of them will advance. So this is the time to make a break between some of these teams here. And with so many big teams in the competition, it's not going to be easy no matter where you stand. So Tribe Gaming, who is currently tied with Navi as they play through the World Championship qualifiers, is going to be on one side of this war here. And just behind them in the overall world rankings is VM Legacy, their opponent today. As we see the overgrowth going into set up for the Root Riders on this very, very first attack. We know, and we've seen it already a lot, that Tribe Gaming is really, really leaning on this overgrowth Root Rider attack. Because not only is it an effective way to get a base down, but it's also a very, very quick and efficient way to get a base down. So he's going to pop that RC ability, clear the Town Hall, Quickly swarm the last couple defenses, and he's barely crossing the one minute mark there, locking that in at a minute and ten. So if we end up in a time battle and nobody misses, then this is going to set Tribe Gaming off on the right foot. Nice job, Kronos. Let's pass over to VM Legacy. Let's see what they can do. Returning fire will be Darkstar. Kick us off with a bit of lightning. No overgrowth on this one. Able to get the defensive queen out of the way. Able to get the monolith down, and I guess that would have invested was seven lightning in a quake. So a lot of spell investment, but he will begin his attack with the Siege Barracks up at the very top. A couple of support troops in the area, like, well, is the king considered a support troop? He's going to go in there and deal with the defensive ice golems, pop his giant gauntlet, and try to get that one. I guess there's only one right there. I guess most of them are up at the very top of the base. So the king is in charge of getting the eagle artillery down. However, the queen is working on the far right side of the base there, working on the right flank to eventually collapse their way to the town hall. He's got super barbarians working their way along the outside there to force her in. Headhunters are down. The golem is doing his job to give her the protection that she needs. But at the same time, King was able to get his job done up top, and the Root Riders go right through the middle of the base. The Scattershot do a little bit of damage to the Valkyries in the area, and so the Tesla does stay standing. That is going to mean it's going to stay behind. You have to go back for it. A couple extra trash buildings that are being left behind as well. The Clan Castle building, uh, a little bit of... A small group of Valkyries is leaving the base right there. We'll go get the outside cleanup done. He throws an extra super barbarian to go get the clan castle that was left behind down. Queen is able to secure the tower takedown and will make her way into the last couple of buildings there, but dies in the process. Hogs from the Hog Puppet able to jump through. And overall looking pretty good here. It was faster for Tribe Gaming, though, but it looks like he does get the clan castle dealt with. And he's going back over the Tesla, and that means he'll turn right back around and go back in his last couple of buildings. So he's got it on lockdown. But it is going to be a faster open attack as Kronos able to hold this one to a minute and 38 seconds. Still solid attack time. But against Tribe Gaming, you got to step it up to a completely different level. I just pulled stats onto the teams to see exactly how these teams compare to each other. And we can see that for the month of April, Tribe Gaming currently has a 98% hit rate. That is... The number of attacks, 155, 152 of them were triples in the month of April, including going flawless, undefeated in our World Championship Qualifier. But if we look at VM Legacy, they played 150 wars as well, and they had 140 triples, meaning they got a 93% hit rate. We can see the individual player hit rates here. We can see that there was one miss from Nebrox, one from Exocyst, and one from Rikiras. And then over on VM Legacy side, it looks like Darkstar missed once, Synthe missed once, and Ninja missed three times, where Uria missed five times. As far as head-to-head -head stats go, it looks like in the last four meetings of these teams, Tribe Gaming has won three of those matches. So let's dive into Yo-Yo 23 and let's see if the fate changes for VM Legacy as it does look like overall, the stats are in the favor of Tribe Gaming. And that tends to be the way that we look at almost every single team in all of Clash of Clans Esports where it's almost like every single team in the world is an underdog compared to both Tribe Gaming and Navi, which are the two top teams in the world right now. But we'll see what happens here as Yo-Yo makes his way forward here. Going to go ahead and go out to this anti-two-star base once again with the 
with the Rear Riders. Hogs out of the Siege Barracks deployed over the right side of the base. The World Champion is already deployed. We need to get the Defensive Queen under control over there. But over the far left side of the base, there, the King and the Queen have gone to the outside. The Queen's going to the Monolith right now, but the Rear Riders are able to get the Town Hall done. And the Rear Champion is passing up the group over to the right. And the Hogs from the Hog Puppet are doing a pretty good job of getting through that area. Looks like he's got it all under control. The Queen will survive. The King will survive. He's got all of these Siege Barracks troops on the outside. Just barely approaching the 1 minute and 10 second mark there and at 1 minute and 16 seconds you lock it in i think one spot that tribe gaming really really stands out above everybody else there is not just the fact that they have a 98 percent hit rate this month but the fact that they were able to not only pull that off but do it while getting some of the fastest attacks that we've seen in the entirety of the esports meta the only team that i have seen recently that was able to take down Tribe Gaming was Navi, and both of them are ranked one and two, tied for first place in our World Championship qualifiers right now. So it's not a surprise that we're seeing these teams being as powerful as they are right now. However, we are seeing Fluxy get to go ahead and just go into the town hall. A very, very nice control of the area there, making sure that he doesn't have any stray buildings that causes anybody to veer off. The Queen works on the right on the bottom side of the funnel. And then the Siege Barracks worked on the top side of the funnel. The Rear Champion is already deployed, but everybody else is going right through the middle, and he will overgrowth the back end of the base there to try, to try to relieve some of the damage as the Rear Riders make their approach. And that makes so that he can move into that area, get everything else down, and then eventually, when the overgrowth wakes back up, he can make his way in there. He's already got the Rage active, but he need to be watching out here for the single photo. Let's to the King right now. They have a freeze for that. Nope, he gets it down. He gets it down before the single photo can go full B, before it can wreck the King. The Queen keeps on working the outside of the base there. Pops her healer puppet, getting even more recovery there. But the base is gone, so recovery is not necessary. And this look at, looks like he's gonna lock this one in. Uh, it's about the same time, but just very, very slightly slower than we saw out of Tribe Gaming. So Tribe will have the time advantage here. So you can see what level Tribe Gaming is playing at even just after the first two attacks. So if you guys have been watching for the World Championship qualifiers, the ladder's just completed. We can see the top 10 teams of the world. And like I said, Navi and Tribe are tied for first place. So Tribe Gaming, not only holding that number two spot, or technically tied for number one, but Buff Rear Riders, their other team is holding number nine. But if I go to page three here, we can see that uh, VM Legacy hitting at number 28 in the world. And it's not easy to get anywhere in the top of the boards there, but we can see that they are competitive with some of the best teams in the world. And that's what we're going to see today is if they can find a way to topple the Titan over a tribe. I'm curious is going to be fighting tooth and nail to make sure that doesn't happen. Is it going to be a Zap and a Lalo? Zap Lalo, we know, can go very, very fast. And Rakiris has proven to be one of the fastest attackers in the world with this. I think the only person who can do it at the same pace that Rakiris is able to do it is, like, Stars from Navi, who has also been able to pull off a 100% hit rate. 100% hit rate in our World Championship qualifiers. Probably using a lot of this attack here, but I guess we'll uh, see when they get to the next stage of the tournament for the World Championship qualifiers, which, if you guys uh, don't know... Uh, so I think I'm going to be casting that. I think I, it's not officially contracted yet, but I hope I'm going to be casting that. They, they asked me, so I'm, I said yes. I said yes, so hopefully you'll see me cast it at the World Championship this year. So, uh, in the meantime, Rikira is able to get the blimp to sail across to go to the Town Hall. Looks like he's got blues collapsing across the top of the base there behind the sweepers. And he, he's got the CC coming his way now. It is a triple ice golem, so he's going to have to deal with that. But he's going to get his way into the monolith there. He's got a bunch of spells go, or a bunch of traps going off there. A bunch of red air bombs. But can he get it? He does get it down. He does get it down. He's got more blues swarming across the left side of the base there. Getting all the defense under control. Now crossing the one minute mark. RC ability still intact. What kind of equipment we got on her? Haste vial and hog puppet. He, can just, he should probably just pop that. He does, and he will get the hogs to help him with the cleanup, and he'll get turned right back around here, and it looks like he's going to lock this one in around a minute and 20 as he gets the last couple of buildings rounded up here. He's going to get one minute and 20 on the dot. One minute and 21 seconds is the final time for Rick Harris, so still staying faster than VM Legacy's average. Let's also keep in mind as we go through this match that it was VM Legacy who knocked Tribe Gaming and Navi out of the World Championship Warmer. See, Chronic ended up going on to win the World Championship Warmer. That was $30,000, but that does not get you into the World Championship. Neither does this. But, you know, it's interesting to see these teams match up against each other, and I guess we'll see over the next two weekends who ends up getting the golden ticket 
to the world championship because there are six teams that are going to make it through so we're going to have all eyes on and these tournaments these community tournaments are all just kind of warm up to get ready for that and obviously we like to see our favorite teams end up getting through in these tournaments to the final stages so we can have the big matchups that we're looking for but vm legacy has taken a note out of tribes book or who actually developed this strategy i'm not even really sure whoever developed this strategy everybody's using it because it has proven to be Almost unstoppable. And look at that. Invisible Tower goes out there. He mistimes his freeze just slightly. But the Town Hall is frozen. He needs to go back for the King's right there. The King will pop his ability there. He'll surge his way forward there. And he got the Town Hall down. And then quickly make his way over to the model. He's got the Skeletal Spell onto the Eagle Artillery. Roar Champion moving across the top of the base there. Getting in... Or wait. Is that the Roar Champion? No, those were just hogs out of the... Out of the Siege Bracks there. The Roar Champion is not around. In fact, he doesn't really have a lot of force to be able to go in and get the cleanup done over the left side of the base. The Warden is following those Super Hogs right now. The Queen is going to steal the Warden's attention, though, as the Hogs start to get picked off. And that's costing him a lot of time here. He's going to have to break a wall. And that means that the clock is going to move further into the favor of Tribe Gaming. But let's remind you guys that neither of these teams have a 100% hit rate. Yes, they have incredibly high hit rates, and the misses are rare. But they do happen, and when they happen, they usually happen against other top teams that have strong bases. So, we are back to tie. More Rue Riders, more Valkyries, more Super Barbarians with the overgrowth. This attack is broken. This is proof. We're seeing it over and over and over, and in the hands of these pro players, it feels unstoppable. But is it? Can it be stopped? Can VM Legacy find the defense, or can they slow the attack down enough that they can make up for time? Because we know that Ninja is able to put in some crazy, insanely fast attacks when he doesn't make mistakes and then rushes too much there and then ends up with a miss. So uh, he's, he's kind of a wild card there, and he could be the make or break player on the team to give this war into VM Legacy's favor. But he does need to get the defensive queen under control up top there. He's got the rage, he puts in the skeletal spell, and he gets the war champion right there, get the support that he needs. Wrap it around the other side of the base there. That I, mean, I guess the Eagle Artillery was not covered there. He covered everything except for the Eagle Artillery so we can snipe it off there. But now he needs to make his way back in the area. Pops the Hog Puppet. He's still got a Queen ability, still has a King ability. King will pop his ability right there, surge his way forward there, get into a tanky position to keep the Royal Champion safe and her Hog safe. But he's got a Triple Ice Golem that's out running loose right now and that could potentially cost him some time. Right now, the attack is very, very fast. Queen has pathing from the Root Rider down here that she's able to make her way to the last couple buildings. But he does... Run out of extra resources here, but all the defenses are gone. The Ice Globes are gone. He steps his way in. Cannon goes down. One minute and 22 seconds on the clock here. Looking back at the groups, we see that the other two teams that are in the same group as VM Legacy and Tribe Gaming that they're going to have to outplay is Wolves of Glory and Pentaflare. Now, you might be looking at those names there and thinking, I don't really know who those guys are. And I would say... I agree with Wolves of Glory. However, Pentaflare plays under the name Taiwanso Newbie. And they are currently number 13 in the world above VM Legacy. Behind Tribe, obviously. But definitely one of the best teams in the world right now. Let, I guess we'll see how that all plays out there. But the last two attackers out of VM Legacy are going to be Synthe and Ninja. Synthe formerly played for Navi when they just recently played in the World Championship. Before that, he played in Millicene MG. Let's see what he can do here as he goes with the Hogs. Hog Riders making their way forward here. And Synthe puts away the Rear Riders and sends in some bacon. He's got the Rear Riders, or excuse me, he's got the Hog Riders with the support of the Headhunters to get through the defensive World Champion at the top of the base. They're charged to Eagle Artillery. He's got the World Champion at the very top of the base and a battle drill over to the left. And he is going to get that top area quickly cleared out here, but... My god, I've never seen hogs move this fast here. This is insane. Moving quickly through the base there. Cleanup is down behind. He's got cleanup everywhere across the top of the base. And he will make his way ending on the town hall. Hold on. Look at all the hogs. Look at all the hogs. They're everywhere. This is the fastest hog attack I've ever seen. Synthe. Moving, moving, moving. The war is on the line. Battle drill. Gets to the town hall. Barely passing the woman to mark there. And holy cow, that was insanely fast. What was the attack time? Replay it. Holy cow, that, that, I've never seen hogs move that fast. I have never, ever seen hog riders complete an attack so close to a one minute mark. That was one minute and three seconds. That is only a couple seconds off of the world record on attack time. That gives VM Legacy a chance. So we ran the numbers. The exact time split between the teams right now after Synthes insane hog rider attack 
is 38 seconds. Realistically, we know that Ninj can push a minute. We have seen it before. And that means that Nibrox needs to put it away right here, right now. He needs to keep this down to around a minute and a half to really secure the win. I guess we'll see what happens. He's going to break out the Overgrowth, the Root Riders, and the Valkyries. Put his faith in the Roots. Line of trees. Easy three. Siege Breaks over to the right. Queen over to the left. Valkyries and Rubrides go right down the gut there with the Eternal Tome, with the Healing Tome, and the Eternal, or with the Healing Tome and the Eternal Tome. Make their way forward here. Triple Ice Gold. I'm going to saw him up here. He's heavily, heavily clumped right here under Poison Tower. Slowing down. Overgrowth locks out everything into the core of the base there, but not the Town Hall itself. Queen's making her way to the Town Hall right now. Scatter Shot hitting that big pack there from the left. He's taking a lot of damage right there. Lots of incoming damage into the defensive World Champion. World Champion on defense. Picking off Rude Riders. He's got the head on his cover this way now. I saw, the get, I saw them get the lock on. The World Champion is holding the line right there. Molten Inferno is holding the line. This is slowing down. This is dying out right around this defensive world champion. The Multi Inferno, the Scatter Shot, and now the Monolith is up. The Queen takes the Town Hall down. He's got Skeleton Spells over there, but the Monolith is going to finally drop the King Steps in. The King will get that done, but he lost a lot of troops right now. Minute and 10 seconds elapsed. He's got about 30 seconds here to get this locked in. Otherwise, the more time that passes, the more opportunity for VM Legacy. Guys, this one is riding up. He looks like he potentially has it under control, but it's quickly slowing down. The King and the Warden are on their own with that Pekka in the middle of the base there. He's got a little bit clean up top, but the time's ticking away fast. This one got away from him. The time is going to be open. VM Legacy can win this. Can he triple this though? Wait a second, wait a second. This may not even triple. Hold up, hold up. What is going down? Oh, jeez. Wait a second. Is he okay? Oh my god, the time, the time, the time, the time, the time. Nebrox still gets to, has to get past this invisibility tower. Loses the Apprentice Warden. Oh, jeez, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, this just happened. The king will finish off the base. But the attack time has gone over two minutes. This is exact. Oh my god, now he's gonna sit there. He's gonna sit there and wait! He's gonna wait! He's gonna wait it out! The warden is not around to support that. The king is on his own. He steps his way through, finally gets it done, and he will step through and get the final shot right there. It is a very slow attack. <laughs> And now VM Legacy has the chance to defeat Tribe. So now with that attack on the books, we re end the numbers. The mark that Ninja has to beat now is one minute and 51 seconds. But just as easily as things went wrong for Nibrox, they could go wrong for Nin. So now the question is, can he go all the way, finish the war off, in the favor of VM Legacy, or do they just straight up find a defense? Or does this slow down in any way at all? But he's gonna set his way into the town hall first. He's got the visible tower there. He's got the race tower, very, very compact area around the race tower on the back side of the base. He's got that, he's got that uh overgrowth on standby, and so he can get that area under control. He's gonna pop it off right now. And he's able to put it right on the center of the Rage Tower, getting all those defenses locked down, but not the Eagle Artillery. Eagle Artillery stays standing and will continue to fire away over there. I feel like it would have been better to just lock out the area with the Eagle Artillery and the defenses that are further there beyond and just get these Molten Infernos down early with his main force. But that's not the way that he chose to do it. He will eventually get to the Artillery, but overall things are going fairly smooth right there. Rogue Champion moving across the top of the base there. She's got a couple Hogs that came out of the Siege Bricks that are getting down in front of her, giving her some extra support right there, but she needs to go invisible right about now and get through these last couple defenses. Defenses rages her up, pops the hog puppet, surges her way forward. She's got the haste file. She's looking to get under control here. Time is looking in his favor right now. Looking like he's going the distance. Ninja will clutch. They will take advantage on time. It's a double perfect war, but this one is going in the favor of the underdog. As now, VM Legacy has taken down Tribe Gaming not only in the Golden Heart Cup, they also beat him in the World Championship warm-up. VM Legacy was definitely the underdog in this match, but the final scores are in. Draw 15-15. Time advantage 5 seconds on average into VM Legacy's favor, so they will take week 1 here in the Golden Heart Cup and Tribe Gaming will have to get some wins against the other two teams 
in their group to be able to make sure that they also end up making it into the next stage of the tournament because remember only eight of the 16 teams will move on and obviously tribe gaming and vm legacy are the two key teams that we're watching for in group c we hopefully will have both of them make it through but i think that pentaflare will give them a fight for that spot and i guess we'll see how it plays out there but i don't know what happened with wolves of glory i guess we'll see they're an underdog team i don't know anything about them maybe they could also fight for that spot as well but i guess we'll see in the long term in the meantime make sure you subscribe make sure you like this video thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one